Hi everyone, Nicole Spohr here today with some Scallop Holiday Gift Tags, part of my Handmade Holiday 2019 series. This series is all about quick and easy, last minute touches that we can create for our holiday packages and gift giving, something that is near and dear to me. I'm sharing this set of eight scallop square and circle Christmas gift tags using lots of new products from the most recent Honeybee Stamps release. These are very beautiful gift tags. I'm a huge fan of gift tags and these are a fantastic way to kind of do assembly line style gift tags that are beautiful not only on the package but if the recipient wants to use it to hang on a tree for example afterwards they will I, my goal was to make them pretty enough that they could be used beyond just the gift giving. Mine are all in the traditional reds and greens for holiday, very much taken from the Honeybee Stamps Holiday Traditions paper pack, and they are made to coordinate with the wrapping paper I have on hand. I'm a firm believer in creating projects that I love to share with you guys, but also making them useful so it's something that's going to work for me in my own home. If you wrap in different colors, switch those out. Very, very easy to do. You can follow the same basic um, style or guidelines, but just go ahead and create them in whatever color family you prefer for your holiday gift packaging. I am quickly showing I have laid out everything here. I did all of my die cutting off camera. I will tell you guys straight up, the, the die cutting took the longest, but I just set everything together in little groups after I die cut it as or as I was die cutting it and literally put them together assembly line style afterwards and it went together so fast. I could have made even more of these if I had die cut more at the time. Um, I did eight because I was like, oh, eight, that's going to be good, you know, to do for the camera. But honestly, once I got to designing these, I could have done a bunch more because it was so much fun. I picked two basic designs to go with either the scallop square or scallop circle. And that's going to be a wreath. This is from the Joy Noel wreath. I layered two different colors of green cardstock wreaths together, bending up the leaves to give it some texture. Because this isn't going to be flat, I love to add the texture to it. So I just bent those babies up. And then I put a little bit of Ranger multi matte medium on some of the leaves. And then sprinkled on some icicle glitter and that's going to dry and give that kind of icy glittery effect to the wreath. I did not die cut all the little individual leaf images that come in the Joy Noel wreath. If you want to see a project with that, I've got some stocking gift card holders where I did do that. These are gift tags. Um, more than likely they could get tossed and if they do, I don't really want to have wasted all that time adding all those little individual leaves. To get around that and still have my wreath have lots of texture, I just like to layer together two different colors of wreaths and that really adds that dimension without having to do all the little um, die cut pieces. I do love that look however and I highly recommend it if you're going to maybe be doing a card. For my second design, I am using the winter bouquet dies and I'm using three sizes of the poinsettia and I'm going to layer them together. Again, dimension is where it's at for these tags. I am bending together or bending all of the petals for my poinsettia together, kind of just pinching them and then gluing them together only in the center. Finishing with the center piece for the poinsettia with that yellow die cut piece, but I want texture. And so I did lots and lots of texture for these. Tweezers are super helpful to pinch that together and hold that adhesive until it's completely dry. The bow also from the Joy Noel wreath, the bows were die cut from pattern papers, some more of that holiday traditions pattern paper. I actually use scraps from the stocking gift card holders that I created a couple weeks ago. Um, I had all the scraps of paper that I had die cut the stockings from, and I used those scraps for these tags. 
those are six by six pieces of pattern paper, you guys. So, um, while I, that stocking's pretty good size and it took up a bunch of the paper, there was enough left to die cut all of these. Plus there's still enough left. I die cut some of the bows from some of those patterns. One of them I die cut from another piece of pattern paper from the uh, paper pad, but I wanted everything to coordinate. And I did use all of the little bow pieces because I think it gives a dimensional bow look without a whole lot of extra work. So I'm just gluing them together right there in the center and then we'll glue that to our tag here in a little bit. I am a tag, huge tag fan. I love creating tags. Then I decided because we added some sparkle to the wreath with the icicle glitter, I wanted to add something to the poinsettia. So I'm taking some white iridescent shimmer and I am not only spritzing the poinsettia, but the leaves. And I have bent the leaves up too. You can kind of see I bent those in half. I spritzed those up, went ahead and set those aside to dry. They will dry pretty quickly. And I'm gonna work on putting together my tags. Kind of while that shimmer spray is drying on those, I can put together my tags. And what I love is I did a front and a back because it just gives a little bit more stability to the tag. It really gives it um, a nice thick base. So back to back, we are backing them. It's gonna be the same step for the circles as the square or the diamond. The base of the tag is cardstock, and then the whole reinforcer is from the, cir the scallop circle gift tag. Um, I used it for both the square and the circle. I love that they're interchangeable. And then the panel for the front, there's a couple of options. There's one that has a piercing design. That's the one I used. I die cut the Holiday Traditions pattern paper with that. But you could also choose to use the plain one if you wanted to, or you could use that with the frame to, um, or the tag shape rather to create a frame and maybe back it with pattern paper. I mean, the, the possibilities are endless. You've got lots of things you can do here. So again, just back to back. I'm going to repeat this for all eight tags. If you were doing more tags, I would just recommend kind of doing like I'm doing here. I tried to do anything that had drying time. So the wreaths that have glitter, those have a little bit of drying time. The iridescent spray, that has a little bit of drying time. So I went ahead and uh, let that sit as well. Anything that had drying time, I let that sit for a little bit while I put my tags together. And again, I had it all laid out on my desk and I had each tag grouping together. So I'd have like circle, circle, because um, I kind of did them, I guess I did four wreaths and four poinsettias. And I just did four black tag backgrounds and four red tag backgrounds. You could do whatever you want to do there. Um, I just kind of did them in, in a row and would set all the components together. And then I pulled the wreaths out, the poinsettias out, and then I simply just grabbed each tag bundle and would put them together. For me, that made the most sense and was the easiest. And then I'm just kind of stacking them as I finish the tags. When you're seeing me use tweezers, Tweezers are probably one of my most often used tool, tools in this last year. They are super handy because they can pinch things together. So for example, I am putting hole reinforcers. I cut two, one on the front and one on the back because I'm a big proponent of making the bag, bag, how about back, look as pretty as the front. So I'm pinching that together with the liquid adhesive. I'm using that fine tip applicator on the Ranger Multi-Matte Medium and just pinching it together um, to hold that all in place. It also came in handy when I wanted to pinch together the elements for the bows. There's three pieces for the bows and I only put glue in the center. I just pinched that together until the glue dried a little bit. Same thing for the poinsettia. I put glue in the center of the poinsettias. I didn't want to put it clear out on the leaves or the petals, pardon me, as I want those to pop up just a little bit. So I really just kind of um, love my tweezers for that kind of thing. They come in so handy, not only to place small little things or work with small die cuts, which I don't have anything super small here today as far as that goes, but they just pinch everything together so nicely. 
and I just kept switching them, pinching that together while I would go ahead and work on another one because I would use a tape runner for the large sections and anything I used liquid adhesive on, I would pinch together with my tweezers. So I am nearing the end of putting together my tags. And we are going to be placing another panel on the back of each of the tags. So we'll be using a square or a circle die cut from white cardstock that we're going to stamp with a sentiment from the Santa Express stamp set, which I particularly love. Um, I find it funny. My 19 year old daughter loves when I have gift tags on packages that say from Santa. Um, she has always loved that. She thinks it's just fun. And so I particularly loved that this stamp set has a lot of From Santa sentiments. So these are great tags for Santa to use. Um, you can always make some of these for Santa, which I think is awesome. He always needs a little extra help at this time of the year. Um, but I thought that was really fun and clever. And the sentiments in this stamp set, I, while I'm putting together the rest of these tags, there's like the North Pole Express parcel. How cute is that? From Santa, wrapped by Santa himself, express delivery from Santa, from Santa Claus, absolutely no peeking, from your secret Santa. I love that one. So many of us do secret Santa things. I think that's great. Uh, hand delivered by Santa Claus. Santa said you've been good this year. With love from Santa, hand delivered by Santa Claus, and Merry Christmas from Santa. That's a lot of stamps in this six by eight stamp set. And there's also a to and from in here. So huge fan, love this stamp set. I think it's fantastic for tags. And um, I hope you guys think so too. I'm ready to put them all together now. I'm so excited. Look at that sparkle on the poinsettia. This was literally the easiest way I could think of to add some sparkle to the poinsettia to make it quick and easy. I'm always looking for the fastest way for tags like this. Um, not to say that I'm not in my card making, but with tags, as I mentioned earlier, they get tossed a lot. Um, you know, you might if you give it to the right person, say another crafty friend, they probably won't toss them. Um, my daughter and both of my sons have really been good about they always save them. They always know, um, you know, don't throw away mom's tags. Um, but they might get tossed. So I hate to spend too much time on them just because they might get thrown away. In addition to that pretty sparkle that we did with the iridescent spray, which I'm just in love with, I'm adding some gems. These are also from Honeybee Stamps, and I'm using them from a couple of different sets. I believe, yes, these gold ones I'm using in the center of the poinsettias is from the Holiday Traditions. These are the Holiday Traditions Crystal Gems, and they're in gold, and I just used three of them in the center of each poinsettia. I am now assembling the wreaths. So I, I had briefly consider die cutting the red berries for my wreath and I decided that was going to be too time consuming and I didn't want to do that. So we are going to be creating berries for the wreaths also from these crystal gems and we're going to be using red ones. Um, I used up the rest of the red ones from the holiday traditions and then I grabbed a few extra from the rainbow crystal uh, gems. Any, basically any red gem that you have in your stash. As soon as I have the wreaths adhered to the tags and the bow adhered to the wreath, I will take those gems and I like to use a craft knife to pick them up from the backing sheet. These already have adhesive on the back of them, so I pick them up with the tip of a craft knife. Uh, maybe a piercing tool would work as well. Just something that you can pick it up. I try not to use my fingers because the oil from our fingers lessens the adhesive and the stickiness of the adhesive. So I try not to do that. And then I'm simply just going to pop these in place. So here's another example of using the tweezers to glue the wreath or the bow to the wreath on the tags because it's just pinching it in the center. That's the only place there's adhesive. 
And once these are dry, I can then kind of pop up the sides of the bow, which gives it a little bit more depth and dimension. But we are going to take those red gems now and decorate our wreaths. I love those little finishing details. So while I don't want to spend hours and hours putting together my tags, I want them to look like I took hours and hours. And I'm telling you, the die cutting probably took an hour and putting them together probably took an hour. Um, part of that time though, my son, my oldest son called me and I was distracted. So it could have gone together maybe even a little bit faster, just depending. But really the die cutting for these is the most time consuming just by having to switch back and forth. But it definitely, definitely is worth it. And if you put together little kits, if you have some older kids, they could even put together some gift tags as well. Look how perfect those little red gems are as berries on the wreath. And I think it just, look at the difference between the one I did and then the others. I think it just makes a huge, huge difference in the finished design. I'm really loving that. And the craft knife makes it so easy, again, just to pick those up and press those down in place. So we are really nearing the end of the creation of the tags. We've got a couple things left. I did die cut, or pardon me, trim some red and white baker's twine. This is actually left over from a card kit, or a tag kit, rather, from this last season. I had tons of this. And so I cut a whole bunch of lengths of this to use for my tag. Very easy that way. It all coordinates nicely. And then we also have to stamp and die cut the backers for each of our tag. If you don't want to do that, you could have all just stamped the sentiments on the back of your tags before you put them together, before you added any of the dimension, um, and just foregone adding that extra little panel. I went ahead and assembled all of my tags because we're going to be creating that extra little die cut piece and then popping it onto the back. Just finish adding a few little extra gems here, which I think is so cute. Another thing I want to mention, that scallop square gift tag set, it does create the diamond shape or the traditional square. So you can create either one and then that center layering piece works with either one of those background tags. I think that is super cute and really gives you a completely different look than the traditional square. Kind of like it, that little diamond shape. I think that's fun. Okay, our gems are all in place. We use quite a bit of those, but you get a lot on a sheet. I'm gonna thread through my baker's twine, and then we're gonna simply knot the ends. And I would say this is probably eight or nine inches of baker's twine. I did not measure it. I trimmed them all to the same length, but I did not measure that first one when I uh, cut it. But this is another example of the assembly line style tag making. Repeating one step at a time just makes putting together your tags so much quicker and easier. I would love to see some of these like in shades of, I think even like silver and white or gold and white, if you do kind of the elegant blue and silver or navy blue and silver, oh, that'd be so pretty. Um, this same basic style and design can be used for any color combination out there. There are so many fun things you can do. Okay, we've got our baker's twine in place. Let's create the back for each of our tags. I am gonna use my dies that I am going to be die cutting to give me, kind of work as a guide. I wanna make sure that the sentiments I'm using fit inside of the shape. So I'm gonna use a circle shape or a square shape and they all are fitting inside, which is awesome. And I am using quite a few of the phrases from this. I don't think I used all of them, but I did use quite a few. And I even repeated a couple just, 
just because I already had them on my Misty. But I got about six per a half sheet of eight and a half by 11 cardstock. And that's simply because I wanna make sure I'm leaving enough room to die cut the square and the circle shapes. I'm using them as a guide so I know exactly where that stamp's gonna go. And I'm using it to just make sure that I'm leaving enough room in between where I'm laying my stamps so that I can die cut that shape after I have stamped them. Then I'm gonna stamp them with a red ink and then after I die cut them with the square or circle shape, I am taking the two sentiment from the Santa Express stamp set and stamping that with black ink somewhere on the tag. Um, all of them say from Santa in some form or fashion. So all I really need is the two part for this. You could use um, different sentiment stamp sets on the back or just maybe a to and from if you need some basic tags that are not from Santa. And again, I have die cut all of these and I'm just gonna stamp them all at once. I did, did all the square ones because that they can all be kind of in the same place. And then I can clean my stamp and I'll do all the circle ones. And from there, we are simply going to adhere the circles and squares to the back of each of our tags. And that is it. Um, that is going to finish off our tags uh, such a fun project. I hope you guys have enjoyed these tags as much as I have enjoyed putting them together for you. Please make sure to visit my blog that it's linked below in the box underneath this video on YouTube for a chance to win a $50 gift certificate to Honeybee Stamps. Thank you so much to Honeybee Stamps for sponsoring today's handmade holiday project. The supplies I use to create these tags are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. Here are a couple more videos featuring honeybee stamps and dies that you might be interested in. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell to never miss a new card making or paper crafting video. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. Happy holidays and we'll catch you next time.